beautiful. Thank you, Hannah. You just open up the portals to heaven when you play. Let's give her a, some appreciation as well. This morning, I was up fairly early, and um, my dog was even still sleeping. Got a little bit of a ring. There we go. Thank you. Um, and I just was thinking, it's probably around, I don't know, 6.30 this morning, and um, the intercessory and prayer teams, we have several different prayer initiatives uh, in our church. They came to mind, you know, we honor our worship team and we honor those that work behind the scenes and the sound. But if you're um, on any of the prayer teams, um, I want you to just stand. Any, any of the prayer teams at any level, um, whether you lead it or attend it, um, just stand up, just would you do that? I know there's, there's probably more. Yeah, Pat, definitely you. Some of them are in the back working with the children. I heard, I think it was Reinhard Bonnke said years ago that successful ministries are paved on the tears of the intercessors. So I just want to honor those of you that pray in secret where nobody sees and shed tears for those you don't know and those that you do know. Let's thank the Lord for just, we have a great prayer ministry here. I want to honor them. And uh, yesterday, around the same time, I was praying, and uh, Brooke, are you, is, Brooke, would you just stand just for a moment? I, we like picking on you. I know you just started coming back, but you came to mind during prayer yesterday, and um, so I looked up what your name meant, and Brooke means streams. And what I felt the Lord was saying is that y your streams of light going into dark places and uh, the ministry that God's calling you into may even be questioned by some believers like, well, you really shouldn't supposed to go in there and hang around those folks. But that's exactly what Jesus did. And I just see you as someone that out of your bellies comes the rivers of life and living water. And you're going to take the rivers of heaven and you are going to bombard and drown hell and extinguish the fires of darkness wherever you go. So. A couple of announcements. This Wednesday, 7 o'clock, we, um, we have a schedule out, out front uh, for Wednesday nights. Each week, each, month, uh, each week, rather, is a little bit different. Uh, the first Wednesday, we like to build relationships, and so we have a covered dish dinner. Now, the, the whole thing about the covered dish dinner is you, you bring two things, a covered dish, and then when you open it, there's a lot of food. So I want, to encourage, yeah, I want to encourage you to come to that. Uh, it's a great way to get to know the church family. Um, I know we have quite a few people that travel from different counties. Um, but another thing, we have, some, um, we have some ministries that attend. One of them is His Girls, and uh, they don't have much means, and these are ladies that have been rescued from a lot of junk. So I want to encourage you to bring more than enough. So bring enough for you and your family and enough to share with others. But I, I don't want to take lightly the covered dish dinner. It's covered dish and communion. Pastor Phil does an excellent job leading that. So that's uh, announcement number one. Announcement number two, tomorrow was the outreach for Halloween inside our, yeah, Amber's leading that up. So <laughs> they spent a, a ton of time putting baskets together where they're going to go out and go into dark places and love on people and give them gifts. Sounds like the kingdom of God. So she's requested, if you go out the door and you go into our chapel, make sure we have the doors open right after service. We'd like you to just lay hands on those baskets before you go. You see, that's Pentecostal laying hands on the basket. So just lay hand on the basket and just declare the goodness of God, declare his kingdom, to glad they'll be anointed. You know, Paul just sent out handkerchiefs and aprons and people were healed and set free from demons. So they're going to get these beautiful gift baskets and they are going to encounter the presence of God. So we'd like you to, to do that as well. Okay? You guys good? How many people are glad to be in the house of the Lord? I, um, I just want to encourage our ministry team that um, as soon as we, as soon as we uh, finish up the message, make your way down front. We want to give you an opportunity. If you didn't receive prayer for something you need or you need prayer for healing, our ministry team will come down front. And I love to... Uh, to meet some of the first-time guests after service and, and talk to our, our church family. However, today, as soon as I say amen, I'm going to go out that door. You're not allowed to follow me, and I'm going to get in my car, drive to the airport, and I'll be spending uh, some time this week in Redding, California um, at Bethel Church, so I'm really excited about that. Um, 
Every, uh, every November, we do what we call the BLN Gathering. BLN is the Bethel Leaders Network, which I'm a part of that network, so that's Tuesday. And then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday is the leaders advance, and pastors and leaders come from all over the world. I remember there was a section a couple of years ago, Russia section, and just we even have pastors in the network in the Ukraine. It's amazing uh, what, what God is doing. So I'll be heading to that, but I'm staying till Saturday to teach. I was asked to teach this time when I'm there at the Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry. So, so pray for me, you know. You know what, you know, anyway, I won't get into, I have some funny things to say, but uh, uh, just because I need to not miss my plane, I'll, I'll hold the jokes for when I get, uh, when I get back, all right? Um, today's message is something that is from two of my favorite scriptures. I shared a little bit online for our Thursday morning encounter, and some of the things that Ben <laughs> said about God, uh, God is commissioning people to go it is the last point of this, this three-point message. So I really see that the Lord is, is just ordaining and, and confirming. Um, three-word title, encounter, change, go. Would you say that back with me? Encounter, change, go. One more time. Encounter, change, go. So we're going to turn to Isaiah chapter 6, a very familiar passage. We're going to go through eight verses, and then I'm going to go back and kind of unpack them for us. Verse 1, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Now this is Isaiah's moment where he's being called to be a prophet, and he's called in this great manifestation and amazing encounter, not only with God himself, but in the throne room of heaven. Let me read verse 1 again. You guys with me? Say amen. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim, seraphim or angels on fire. Somebody say fiery angels. Above it stood seraphim, each with six wings. Now watch this. With two, he covered his face. With two, he covered his feet. And with two, he flew. And one cried out one to another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And, and Rosa, you did such a, a great job leading us. And, and, and you sensed the theme of the Lord. We didn't discuss what I was going to speak. And this happens with Dave all the time. You know, God is speaking. He speaks through the opening of the service. He speaks through the music. Just, just beautiful. Let's read that part of the verse with a loud voice. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Let me just pause right there. In the scripture, there, Jesus and, and the Lord is the Holy Spirit. Three in one are declared of, of many things. He's our provider. He's our healer. He's our deliverer. He's the alpha. He's the omega. He's our father. And that's my favorite part of he's our father. But there's one thing that he's called out three times in a row, and that's holy holy, holy. So even in our relationship as sons and daughters to our Father, we still remember, so we avoid that spirit of familiarity that He is holy, holy, holy. What did you say? There was a throne room experience today, and that Pastor Bill has said we're going to be experiencing just out of the blue these throne room experiences, and we embrace a holy God. Somebody say encounter, somebody say change, and somebody say go. Verse 4, and the posts of the doors were shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. You know, I, I, we've had some amazing manifestations during worship, one of which that's been happening frequently is people hear more voices than are in the room. And, and I don't mean like you need to see somebody and lay on a couch and then tell you, ask you about your childhood voices. I'm talking about there's another world that breaks through every time we gather. And, and Angela, just to echo what you said, I was so encouraged by how you all became worship leaders too. It's powerful. And there's angels in the room now and we've heard many people, credible people, young people, older people, and in between hearing angels singing. This is what we're going for here, to build big people 
and to see another world. I burn for this more than I ever have before, to see the manifestation of heaven on earth. The other is fragrances of heaven. How many of you experienced that in this room when you've been here, worship? See some tests. And what about hearing angels? Let me see those of you that have heard angels in here singing. Good. Verse 4 again. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. I'm waiting for a smoke-filled worship service. I'm waiting for us to just feel the earthquake of heaven. Aren't you? I mean, I want that stuff to happen. <laughs> I'm all for it. I'm all in. I want him to show up and show off, don't you? It's important. We'll talk about the importance of encounters that manifest in our life. Now, we're going to move into verse 5. Now, he's experienced, he's had this encounter. So we've seen in the first four, first four verses this powerful encounter with God sitting on the throne and, and sees him and sees these angels on fire and they're crying out, holy. See, when we're in a holy moment, it, it happens spontaneous. No one, I stepped out for a moment. Did we call people forward or they just come spontaneously before Ben got up? Both? Okay. Yeah, but there was, when I walked in, I saw this, that because we were in this holy moment, there was a breaking of hearts. We want our heart to break as often as possible because when God puts it together, it becomes bigger. Yeah. So having a contrite, humble heart before the Lord will make you bigger in the, in the kingdom of God and make you very dangerous to darkness. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, I am very dangerous to darkness. So let's look at uh, verse 5. <laughs> verse 5, woe is me for I am undone because I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. What is he being called to be? He's called to be a prophet. He's going to speak on behalf of the Lord. For my eyes have seen the King and the Lord of hosts. Verse 6, then one of the seraphim flew to me in his hand, having a live coal, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away. If your iniquity has been taken away, can you celebrate the goodness of God and what he did on the cross for us? <laughs> behold, this has touched my lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin is purged. Verse 8, I also heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Somebody say encounter. Somebody say change. Somebody say go. For me, this eight verses outlines a perfect worship service. It outlines a perfect secret place alone with the Lord. When we have an encounter with his presence, never grow weary, never become familiar with the wonder of God. In the kingdom, the best way to mature in Christ is to become childlike and never lose your wonder, your wide-eyed wonder, it says in the Passion Translation of your father coming in a room and touching you, however that is. So let's unpack this. You guys ready to unpack this? All right, well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Number one, we saw the encounter. It, it, it's clear, but I, I want to break out some things on the importance of encounter. So we're just going to turn to Revelation chapter 1. I'm sorry, chapter 4. Let's go to Revelation chapter 4. I can always find Genesis and Revelation right away. This is John, we've got three chapters behind us, but it says, after these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. Let me just stop just for a moment, I'll read that again, but I just had this, just this immediate download. You know, John is older now, this is years later. All the other disciples are gone. They've been martyred, cruel deaths, except for Paul who was beheaded because he was a Roman citizen. So John 
lived through his execution. They tried to boil him in oil and he lived. I have to wonder what he looked like and what he felt like. Unless there was a miraculous Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire, which there very well could be. But I, I just want to say this. I, I looked over at, at Ben last Sunday, and I think it was Sunday night, and, and I looked over, and, and, and those are that are older in the Lord, are, are seasoned citizens in the church. And I looked over, and they're running around, and they got flags, and they're doing this, and they're, not, they're dancing, not worrying about throwing out a hip. They were just on fire. And I looked over at Ben, and I said, we have some of the most childlike seniors that I've ever seen in any church I've ever been. And I want to encourage you to run the race until the end. So here's John. Peter, James, and John. He was part of the three. The three, the twelve, the seventy, the five hundred, and the multitude. John was in the top three. He was in the inner circle. He was the senior leadership team for Jesus. And for all of that working for the Lord, he ends up getting boiled alive, lives, and then sent to a prison island. Doesn't sound like the 401k retirement plan that most of us would expect for that kind of faithfulness. But what does he decide to do? He says, I'm going to fast and I'm going to pray. I think inside his heart he was still thinking, you know, as long as I'm still here, I think there's more heaven on earth that's to be tasted and seen. And if it wasn't for that endurance, we would not have the book of Revelation. Let's give the Apostle John some honor and cheer for him. Maybe the Lord will let him peek in this morning. After these things I looked, and behold, the door standing open in heaven, and the voice I, which I first heard was like a trumpet. Somebody say, like a trumpet. Somebody yell out whose voice that was. All right, now that you know the answer, somebody yell out whose voice that was. After these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven, and the voice I first heard was like a trumpet speaking and saying, come up here, come up here. Somebody say, come up here. When we talk about encounters and we get into the realm of heaven while we're still on the earth, it's important to understand that the invitation and the access is 7 by 24. The door is not shut. The door is still open, and Jesus is calling you up. And the invitation to heaven is loud. It's like a trumpet. So no matter what you've gone through, no matter what you've done, no matter where you are, you want your invited and welcome into an encounter. Somebody say, Jesus is calling me higher. Jesus is calling me higher. I want to go up, up, up. So heaven will come down, down, down. It's supposed to be loud. It's supposed to be bold. It's supposed to be powerful. You think what we did in here during worship stayed in this room? It's shaking the demons in their boots. And they're already nervous enough with the team that's going to be going out on Halloween. Somebody call it the devil's Christmas or whatever you want to call it. Let me tell you what I call it. This is the day every day, including October 31st, is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. He is with me. He goes before me. He's behind me. You go ahead, do your spiritual mapping if the Lord calls you to do it. But my spiritual mapping is the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And all, somebody say all, who dwell in it. So when you go down those dark streets and you go into those brothels, the Lord is with you. Those are his streets. That's his map. And that's his day that we're going to bombard hell for the sake of heaven and people are going to be set free. Amen. Amen. And amen. <laughs> I almost pulled my Pentecostal hanky out for that one. <laughs> so when we talk about encounter, I want to talk about the invitation and the access. And we have to understand the great price that was paid for us to avoid the secret place is a sad testimony of the goodness that he did on the cross. It's to waste the precious spilling of his blood. I'm so glad that I get to go to heaven when I die, aren't you? 
But I'm excited, just as excited as to have more of heaven on earth as I live. So we're going to continue on. So when we, we won't go back to Isaiah chapter 6 just yet. But if you remember, the angels or the seraphim are flying and two they're flying, two they cover their face, and two they cover their feet. Now I don't know when they started doing that, if they always were doing that, but they were there forever after God created them, singing this one lyric. After the fall, some things changed. There was still intimacy with Adam and Eve, but they could no longer walk in that deep intimacy that was lost in the garden. So we have them covering their feet. Moses approached the burning bush, and what was he told to do? To take off your shoes. With two, they cover their eyes. Back in the Old Testament, what would happen if you looked at God face to face? You'd die. So 1,500 years later, or more, we see John sees these same seraphim on fire. And you know what they're crying out? Holy, holy, holy. I think these seraphim have had a great influence on Dave Boggs. Because he will sing until breakthrough, even if it's just one word. So we look at verse 6, chapter 4 of Revelation. Before the throne was a sea of glass like crystal. In the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures, full of eyes in front and in back. The creature was like a lion, the second like a calf, the third was like the face of a man. And the four living creatures, and the fourth living creature like a flying eagle. The four living creatures each had six wings. So we can conclude these are the same. Yes? Okay. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around, within, and they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. You can take that down. So I want you to picture in your mind a parallel Bible, if you would. So you have Isaiah chapter 6. Two, they covered their face. But now, in Revelation 4, they have eyes in front and within and everywhere else. When I first saw that years ago, I have, it's one of my favorite things to meditate on when I think about what Christ did. And everybody say, could it be? You would think that Isaiah probably would have written down if they had eyes everywhere. I have to wonder that when Jesus said, it is finished, they could look. Because now we can see him face to face and live. On earth as it is in heaven in the Old Testament. On earth as it is in heaven in the New Testament. We can look, we can approach, we don't take off our shoes. We actually march boldly into the throne room of grace with the muddy shoes of sin and faults and all of those things and shame. And we just run in because there is a road that is paved in blood that wasn't there in Isaiah's life. So we have an encounter. And look the price that was paid. When we have encounter nights, when we have small meetings, man, I want to encourage you to come. Make sure you're having encounter times at home. So we have access, we have a loud invitation. <clears throat> we have this amazing parallel difference because of what Jesus did on the cross. You guys with me? Yeah. And it's important to understand the importance of encounters. This is one of my favorite passages, and I don't have much more to go. But in 1 John chapter 1, <clears throat> verse 1 through 4, it says, that which was from the beginning. Here's John again. Now you wonder, 
Uh, it just, he, he just had this awareness of who Jesus was, and he understood the moment and who he was with. It, you find it weaved into his, his writings. Is everybody okay? Yeah. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, sounds like an encounter to me, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. They saw him, they heard him, and they got to touch him, and they lived God in flesh. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which, are, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. <clears throat> the life was manifest, and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life, which was with the Father, was manifested to us. <clears throat> Excuse me. Verse 3. That which we have seen, we have heard, and we declare to you that you also have fellowship with us, and truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Verse 4 is key because we're going to go into go and close this out. And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. They saw Him. They heard Him. They touched Him. And that's what brought them the fullness of joy. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we take that joyful strength of an encounter to the world that's in darkness. That does not need to be browbeat anymore with the Bible. Doesn't need to be shamed. Doesn't need to be asked the question, what if you die tonight, are you going to burn in hell? When we leave this parking lot, there's one sign that you see when you leave. It says, give them heaven. Give them heaven. So when we have these encounters like we had today, when we have what we experienced at the altar today, Things, three things should take place. We encounter the Father. And there's a moment of woe is me. I'm undone because I want to be more like Him. It's not a shame thing. So we have an encounter, we have access, and then we go to point number two and we go to change. David said, search my heart, O oh God, and see if there's any wicked way in me. This is not a shame inventory. This is, this is a heart bared, broken open saying, you know, I'm, I'm not even sure if I buried some things. So Lord, I'm going to take a moment in this secret place and thank you for the encounter. Thank you for me hearing angels sing. I've actually heard them one-on-one -on -one in my office some years ago where it was just me singing a new song, two or three words, and the, this most beautiful voice was singing and echoing after everything I sang. And that was when I was a young youth pastor, and that encounter is still an anchor of faith for me. That when I'm weary and I'm tired or whatever it is is coming against me, I go, this is real, and I, I testify alone. I give testimony alone. I remember when the angel sang. I remember when my dad was hooked up to machines, and he was supposed to die, and he lost oxygen to his brain, but we prayed as a church, and he came out of it and lived many, many years and had no loss of brain function. These encounters, we have to treat these encounters with great love and passion. And however that happens, you know, I, 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 some, I seem to fall into the weeping prophet. If it's laughing, if it's crying, if it's feathers, if it's gold dust, if it's wind, if it's fragrances, if it's him, I want him. It's not the something, it's the someone, amen? And it's in these encounters where all of a sudden I have this moment now where I'm like Isaiah, because I'm being called to go out. He was called to go be a prophet, speak to the nation. Woe is me, I'm undone. I'm a man of unclean lips, because I live a, among a people of unclean lips. And then what happens? The angel comes, tongs of the altar, purges his lips, and his sin is taken away. Last week, I was so personally ministered to by Steve Backlund, weren't you? Yeah. If you weren't here, watch it online. 
<clears throat> and we had some private time, and you know, the three main things he talked about, well, several main things, hope and joy, right thinking, but also right speaking. And if you, I think it was either Sunday morning or, or, or maybe Sunday evening, it was one of the sessions where he said, in regards to speaking properly, that God would give you creative, something creative to implement this in your life. How many people remember when he said that? Anybody? But okay. And as soon as he said it, I got a download, and I want to share with you what I did about it. I don't just want to bring people in, and wow, that was great, and Bethel people come, and, and we, we love them, and they're, they're, we're one family. But I don't want to be saying, oh good, I can't wait till they come back. I want to make sure that I'm implementing what was imparted, and I'm making it come alive, and I'm watering it, and I'm fertilizing it. So the Lord downloaded that for on Monday morning, I was to section off a part of my morning alone. Trisha was vacationing with her mama, and I would just spend a time in silence. <clears throat> and the Lord would download things I've been saying that I shouldn't say anymore. Some of it, that self-criticism. And that he would just set me free of it. And I sat there and I just, as soon as I got on our, my lanai's, one of my favorite places to preach, I just sat there and did this. Not easy for an Italian preacher to do. And immediately the presence of the Lord just came onto that lanai, just like a wind. And I was just undone by the presence of the Lord. And I had my laptop out, and I have a journal, and I started, and he went bam, 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 bam. And my unclean lips were cleaned. And I renounced them. Then I was about, after about three hours, I was given the freedom to speak, and then I renounced them out loud once and for all. And then I began to declare the opposite. As I was preparing this outline, I felt so strongly at this moment for the last several days that we're to just take a moment and have an encounter and allow the Lord to reveal to you some things you've been saying about yourself, about others, some things that have been spoken over you that we need to just break. So just take a moment and just close your eyes. And just allow the Holy Spirit to free you of some things that have been spoken over you. If words were spoken over you that didn't build you up to make you more like Jesus, then they are a lie from hell. Let's laugh at that. I really feel there's a word for someone in here or watching online that you were told by a parent that you're stupid. Well, that's impossible because God made your brain. No, you're actually brilliant. You have between your ears a supercomputer. So, Father, I break any curse or every ill word or any shameful word that's been spoken to anyone that's on the sound of my voice. And I declare, Father, that they have the mind of Christ, the voice of Christ. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray that all of us, when we leave here, we would think differently and we would speak differently. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Now, thank the Lord that you've been set free. Thank you. And then lastly, after he's had an encounter, after he's been purged of wrong talking, let me give you one more point on the wrong talking. You know where the Bible says in James that no man can tame the tongue, and the tongue is like a rudder, it steers a big ship. Steve just did a great job on, on talking about how what we say will steer and navigate our life. But you know, it's, it's almost, I've heard some Christians over the years that saying, well, no man can tame the tongue. It's almost like, well, I, I, 
That's, you can't control it. Well, no man can tame the tongue, but the Holy Spirit in you can. So everybody lay out, line up, stick out your tongue. We're going to lay hands on your tongue. No, we're not going to do that. Come out! <laughs> Who shall I send? Who will go? Hannah, would you help me? Thank you. Who shall I send? Who will go for us? I'd like the ministry team to come on up. I'd like all of you to stand. We've had a great encounter during worship today. Powerful. We had a very holy moment at the altar, not once but twice. Now let's make this third part of the service what the Lord would like to see the triune life lived out. If you need prayer for anything, healing in your body, whatever that may be, you're welcome to come. But if you feel that, you know what, I'm going to do more to share this gospel. I am going to go. I am going to speak on the behalf of the Lord, even if it's to one relative or one friend. Or you're already doing it, but you want greater reach and greater influence, a greater anointing, more power, more wisdom, more love to love the unlovable. This is a commissioning moment. They're going to pray for you for whatever the need is, but they're also going to pray a commissioning moment for you to go and give the people in your sphere of influence heaven. So if that's you, don't wait any longer. Let's come down.